Have you ever wondered how a group of humans, not quite us but not entirely different from us, managed to survive a world that seemed designed to wipe them out? Picture this. A land shrouded in ice, where freezing temperatures fell well below freezing for months on end. Snow fell thick and heavy, transforming forests into barren wilderness and turning lakes into icy plains. The world we know today, rich forests, sprawling grasslands and a comfortable climate, was a distant dream. Instead, this was the Ice Age, a period when huge ice sheets covered much of Europe and Asia, making survival a daily battle against a harsh and unforgiving environment. This icy world was home to the Neanderthals, a human species that lived here long before we came into the picture. Neanderthals were tough, resilient, and remarkable survivors in a climate we can barely imagine today. But how exactly did they do it? How did these people, without advanced technology, without permanent houses, without modern clothing, conquer freezing temperatures, find food in a barren wilderness, and keep their families alive? To appreciate their story, we need to first step back in time, back nearly 400,000 years, when the first Neanderthals started to appear in Europe and Western Asia. At first, the climate was not quite as icy as it would become during glaciations, but it was already a challenging place to live. The landscapes were a mixture of forests, grasslands, and scrub, a rich ecosystem filled with large mammals. There were mammoths roaming the steppe, giant deer, cave bears, and lions creatures that provided both danger and opportunity. For the Neanderthals, these animals were not just a food source. Their ability to successfully hunt, butcher, and utilize nearly every part of a large mammal made the difference between starving and thriving. They were proficient hunters, and their physical characteristics reflect their specialized lifestyle. Neanderthals were stockier and more robust than modern humans, with powerful limbs and a large, deep chest. This physiology wasn't a coincidence. It was an adaptation to conserving body heat in freezing conditions and delivering powerful strikes in close quarter hunting. Evidence from archeological sites shows us how sophisticated their hunting strategies were. They teamed up in groups to bring down large game, a practice that required careful planning, communication, and cooperation. Spear points made from stone were attached to wooden shafts, creating formidable stabbing and thrusting weapons. There are sites where numerous mammoth or bison skeletons have been found alongside clusters of stone tools. A clear indicator that the Neanderthals were not just opportunistic foragers. They were proficient, purposeful hunters who knew how to maximize their resources. But food was not their only challenge. Staying warm during freezing nights was a constant battle against the elements. Naturally, the Neanderthals turned to whatever resources were available. There is strong archaeological evidence that they made use of caves and rock shelters to stay sheltered from icy blasts and snowstorms. Inside these caves, traces of ancient hearths, rings of ashes and charred bone, show us that the ability to control fire was key to their survival. It provided much needed warmth, a place to cook their food, and a center for social gathering, a literal and figurative light in a dark world. Some sites even suggest the careful use of mammoth bones and skins to construct temporary structures, a kind of house, when caves were unavailable. Large curved mammoth tusks were sometimes anchored into the ground to form a frame, then covered with skins and vegetation to keep the icy wind from freezing those within. It is a powerful testament to their adaptability and ingenuity, a ability to use whatever resources were at hand to create a livable space. So the Neanderthals were not simple creatures battling against a hostile world. They were proficient survivors who mastered their environment. They hunted efficiently, kept warm through the use of fire and clever structures, and successfully raised their young in a freezing wilderness, all without the advanced tools we associate with later humans. As we move forward in this story, it's worth pausing to appreciate just how much the Neanderthals were a perfect match for their icy world. They weren't at simply holding on against all odds. They were thriving in a place that would destroy many species less well adapted. One key to their survival was their ability to exploit a range of resources in their environment. Large game like mammoths, bison, and deer were certainly an important part of their diet. But the Neanderthals were not exclusively big game hunters. They were adaptable foragers who made use of whatever food was available 
from small mammals and birds to fish, roots, and berries, depending on the season and their geographic location. Evidence from dental plaque and food remains shows us that their diet was more varied than we previously believed. It wasn't all pure meat. There were traces of plant matter, seeds, roots, and possibly even cooking starch-rich food, which suggests a sophisticated understanding of their ecosystem. Certain sites near rivers and lakes show clear signs that Neanderthals were proficient at fishing, using simple wooden structures or spears to capture freshwater species. Shellfish, freshwater mussels, and small mammals were all fair game when large herds were scarce. This adaptability meant that when the climate shifted and food sources became unreliable, the Neanderthals were not stranded. Instead, they turned to whatever resources were available in their environment. That ability to diversify their diet may have made all the difference in their ability to survive in a world where temperatures fell, habitats were disrupted, and large game sometimes disappeared. But food and physical prowess were not their only survival strategies. The Neanderthals were also profoundly social creatures. Living in small groups, typically 10, 30 individuals, meant that knowledge, skills, and resources were shared. There was a division of roles within the group. Some may have specialized in making stone tools, while others were proficient at processing food, making clothing, or treating injured members of their clan. Evidence from injured skeletons shows us something remarkable. Many individuals lived long enough to heal from serious injuries, broken limbs, deep cuts, or trauma to the head, injuries that would normally be fatal without help. The fact that injured individuals survived for years after their trauma suggests a strong communal care. Someone must have provided food, sheltered them, and kept them comfortable while their wounds healed. It speaks volumes about their compassion and ability to care for the weak and injured, traits we typically associate with our own species. This ability to care for each other wasn't just a nice side story, it was a key to their survival. If a hunter fell and injured his leg, the group didn't leave him to die. Instead, they supported him and kept him alive, preserving his knowledge and experience for future generations. It highlights a deep social bond, a form of solidarity, that made the group more resilient in the face of danger. And this solidarity extended to the way knowledge was passed down. Young members learned from their elders, not through books or formal education, but through observation, imitation, and shared experience. They learned which plants were safe to eat, how to nap stone into a cutting tool, how to track and bring down large prey, and how to care for their sick and injured. It was a rich communal knowledge base, a legacy that made the clan greater than the sum of its members. As we delve further into the story of the Neanderthal survival, we find that their ability to innovate and adapt went far beyond just physical prowess and communal care. They were thinkers, problem solvers, who used their resources in sophisticated and creative ways. It wasn't just brute force that kept them alive. It was a deep understanding of their surroundings and a remarkable ability to manipulate their environment to suit their needs. For example, we know from archaeological finds that the Neanderthals were proficient tool makers. They mastered a sophisticated stone napping method called the Levallois Technique a way of shaping a stone core to produce specialized flakes. This allowed them to create a range of specialized tools, knives, points, scrapers, all from a single piece of stone. It was a huge technological advance that made their tool production more efficient and adaptable. But it wasn't just stone. The Neanderthals made use of bone, antler, and wood to produce a range of instruments. They crafted wooden spear handles, bone awls for piercing leather, and even specialized smoothing and shaping tools. The ability to combine different materials into composite tools meant they could respond more quickly and effectively to changing conditions. Whether that meant making stronger hunting gear or more delicate cutting instruments. Some finds suggest that Neanderthals may have treated their wooden points by hardening them in fire, a form of tool enhancement that required careful control of temperature and a deep understanding of material properties. All of this points toward a sophisticated knowledge of their environment, a knowledge base that was not static but continually growing and improving. This adaptability also shows up in their ability to inhabit a range of landscapes, from forests and grasslands to icy steppe and mountainous regions. 
They were not a people who remained stranded in a small corner of the world. Instead, they dispersed across a huge geographic range from Western Europe all the way to Siberia and the Levant. That kind of adaptability demanded an understanding of different terrains, resources, and climate conditions, knowledge that must have been preserved and passed on through generations. And it wasn't just their tool use and geographic range that highlights their adaptability. There is growing evidence that Neanderthals were capable of symbolic thought and creativity. Some sites show traces of pigments, ochre and manganese, that may have been used for body paint, coloring their skin, or marking objects. There are also perforated shells and eagle talons that appear to have been worn as pendants, a form of personal ornamentation, suggesting an ability to express a unique group or individual identity. Such finds challenge the view that Neanderthals were purely pragmatic creatures, concerned only with survival. Instead, we see a rich, culturally sophisticated people who were developing traditions, making choices about their appearance, and adding a layer of symbolism to their daily lives. It underscores their ability to connect, not just physically through communal care, but mentally and culturally through shared meanings and traditions. As we come toward the end of this remarkable story, it's worth reflecting on the legacy of the Neanderthals, a legacy that lives on not just in stone tools or archeological sites, but within us. Although the Neanderthals eventually disappeared from the fossil record roughly 40,000 years ago, their genes remain a part of us today. Modern humans of non-African ancestry carry about 1 to 2% of their DNA from Neanderthals, a legacy of ancient encounters and interbreeding between two human species. This isn't a small detail. It highlights the deep connection we share with these ancestors. Certain genes we inherited from Neanderthals may have provided us with an advantage. For example, genes related to the immune system, skin pigmentation, and adaptability to cold. So in a very literal sense, we carry within us a piece of their ability to survive in harsh conditions. Some researchers have even suggested that this legacy may influence aspects of our health today, from susceptibility to certain diseases to the way we respond to viruses and allergens. The story of the Neanderthals, then, isn't a story of a separate, failed species. It's a story of interaction, adaptation, and shared survival. A story that is profoundly intertwined with our own. So when we picture the Ice Age, we shouldn't imagine a barren wilderness filled with dim-witted creatures battling the elements. We should picture a rich and sophisticated people, people who mastered their environment, cared for their injured, passed knowledge from generation to generation and challenged the icy world on their own terms. The Neanderthals were not a side branch of human evolution. They were a key part of it. They illuminate not only where we come from, but who we are today. Creatures of adaptability, creativity, compassion, and deep connection. And now we'd love to hear from you. What do you think made the Neanderthals such remarkable survivors in a freezing world? Do you feel a strange kinship with them knowing we carry their legacy within us? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear your perspectives. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to our channel for more journeys into the past. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring. The stories of our ancestors are far from finished.